Hi, welcome to Conceptual Inquiry. You might be wondering what Conceptual Inquiry is. The answer is very simple. Conceptual Inquiry is the investigation of abstract concepts. We ask questions like, what is a line in mathematics? What are parallel lines? Uh, what is a species? What is life? And these questions are in biology. What is a chemical change in chemistry? What is social identity in sociology? And so on. So what this means is that conceptual inquiry is not part of any one discipline, but is found in all disciplines. Imagine two parallel lines. Will they meet? No. <laughs> Good. You are. <laughs> You're getting wise? Okay. Alright, so I should say in Euclidean geometry, they will not meet. How do you know this? This is an axiom. In order to understand the meaning of the statement that parallel lines do not meet, I have to understand what parallel lines are, right? Do you understand what parallel lines are? Yeah. I do not understand what that expression means. I am not joking. I do not understand it. Now, you might think it is very strange that you understand it and I don't understand it. What could be the possible reason? Well, possible reason is my understanding of mathematics is more limited than yours. So let me let me pursue that hypothesis. All right. In which case, you should explain to me what parallel lines are. All right. So what are parallel lines? We are trying to investigate the concept of parallel lines, and that is conceptual inquiry. What you mean to say is that if you have two lines on the same plane, if those two lines are straight, and you measure, find out the perpendicular distance between them, it has to be like this, not like this, right? And at any other point, you again do the same thing, these two should be equal, right? And that's another way of putting it is to say, this is equally distant and you can define equidistant as this. So a pair of equidistant lines, you can add four planar straight lines and so on. Good. But to understand the concept of equidistant, I need to understand this and I need to understand this. What do we mean by perpendicular? When are two lines perpendicular? When they intersect at 90 degrees. What do we mean by 90 degrees? <laughs> 90, one quarter of a circle. Okay, so if you have two lines and all these lines are, all these angles are equal, that's 90 degrees, right? We call it right angles. 90 degrees is an arbitrary unit of measurement, degree. It could have been 100, right? We could have devised it like that. It could have been 100, it could have been 2000, it could have been 10, it doesn't really matter. The important part is, if you do this, all these angles must be equal. That's when you say right angles, right? And we arbitrarily said this, this totality is 360. Somebody just decided randomly, right? It could have been 400 or 100. Okay, I understand these things. I understand this. I'm having difficulty with the, the concept of line and the concept of straight line. When you began, you said parallel lines are lines which are equidistant. Lines can be either straight or curved. All right? Suppose I draw two concentric circles. Are they parallel lines? Are concentric circles parallel lines? Yes or no? Why not? 
If I say parallel, if I define parallel lines, are parallel lines are equidistant lines with a coplanar? Are they parallel lines? Yes. If I define parallel lines are as equidistant straight lines with a coplanar, then they are not. So, but how are they lines? There is no starting point. And I mean, they are not two different. Ah, you are saying, you are saying that, you are saying this is not a line. Are you saying that is not a line? No, that is a line. It is a line. But a circle is not a line. So you say you agree that this is a line. It's a curved line. It's a curved line. Now, is that a curved line? Yes. Now? Yes. So suddenly it ceases to become a line? So, why is it that this is a line, but this is not a line? I need to understand, okay, I think my beginning problem is really, I don't understand the concept of lines. Okay, let's leave it like that. You agree that if you, if you treat this as a line, as a curved line, then these are parallel lines if you define parallel lines the way I define, right? So the answer to the question depends on the definition or the concept of parallel lines that you are talking about. So it's extremely important when you answer a question that you understand the concept being referred to in the question. It's extremely important when you say some statement is right or wrong, you understand the concept that the words refer to. Now consider a statement that light travels in a straight line. You know what black holes are. You also probably know that at what is called the event horizon of a black hole, light travels in a circular path, returning to its source. So if, if given the statement that light travels in a straight line, and given the other statement that light travels like this at the event horizon of black hole, the logical conclusion, rational conclusion is that this is a straight line. But of course, straight line in a curve, no, it's not a Euclidean surface, but at least that, okay? So, on the Euclidean flat plane, we'll have to treat this also as a line. Okay, so we say this is, these are lines. You, if you draw a perpendicular here, and if you draw another perpendicular somewhere else, they'll be parallel, right? Will that theorem hold here? No. Yes? 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 I drew two perpendiculars, right? You agree that these are perpendiculars and these are parallel lines. But are these two lines now parallel? No. But here they are, right? If you define parallel lines in terms of straight lines, when you draw two perpendiculars, there will also be parallel lines. But if you don't, then not necessarily. Let me go back to my earlier question. Can two par can two parallel lines meet, intersect each other? Yeah. In what? In, in Euclidean flat? Yeah. In concentric circles, though, they don't intersect. But so, my, I'm not talking about the pictures that are there. I want you to imagine in your mind the possibility of two parallel curved lines. Because I'm not, at this point, I'm not distinguishing between straight and parallel. A general theory of parallel lines. Curved or straight doesn't matter. Can two parallel curved lines intersect? No. Yeah. Okay. Yes, don't sir. go, don't yes, go by sir. a knee jerk reaction. Okay, there are two ways of answering this question. One is yes. to use, hold on, hold on. One is to use your imagination. Okay? Close your eyes and imagine 
curved lines. Do that in your mind. Mathematics is done in your head. Occasionally a piece of paper helps, but it is inside your head, inside your mind that it happens. Can anyone get two parallel curved lines intersecting? You can? This is what the student drew in his notebook. Let me... Oops. So, uh, a concept of parallel lines is beginning to undergo a change. Okay? Yeah. What we are saying that these two parallel lines should not intersect with each other. These are the two different parallel lines. Where they are meeting, they are not meeting with each other. Okay. So let me put dots. These are. Let me put these dots on this, right? This is the first line, and the second one is second. This is one line, and here is another line. You see this crossing the other line? Right? You can do this experiment yourself. Do you disagree? Yes. Okay, let me try again. Here is one line. You agree that's a line? Yeah. Okay, the next one. Exactly like this, I'm going to draw, but this time with dotted lines. This is line A and this is line B. Alright? Let's do this in terms of dots so that it's easy to see. That's the dotted line, line B, intersect with the, the non-dotted line A. That's right. So you see that a line can... Here, this line is intersecting with itself. So that a curved line can intersect with itself. A straight line cannot, right? Can it? Can a straight line intersect with itself? In, in Euclidean geometry, no, yes, it, it, it cannot. But what about other geometries? Can it intersect with itself? Yes. yes. Which geometry? Non-Euclidean. Non-Euclidean geometry. Uh, in spherical geometry, there are many non-Euclidean geometries. In spherical geometry, can a straight line intersect itself? Yes. yes. You're giving me two answers too quick. When I get an answer of the type that you can give in an examination, I'm very skeptical. Okay? If I ask you a multiple choice question that takes exactly one minute and, and you answer yes, Obviously, you have not thought about it, right? It's a knee-jerk reaction. I want you to answer questions thinking about it, but of course, you can't practice this art if you're answering exam questions. If you think and answer exam questions, you will flunk, <laughs> right? But that's not what I'm trying to do. Take your time, think. But okay, I leave that question to you. This is for your discomfort. <laughs> But I want to know, I want to know, I have serious problems. I don't know what a line is, curved or straight, I don't know. What is a line? A la, wait, wait, let me write that. Line is a set of points. What is co-linear? Co-linear means on the same line, right? So you're going to have trouble saying a line is a set of points on a line. <laughs> that would work, right? That is called a cyclic, a vicious cycle. Not this cycle, but conceptual cycle. Okay, you said a line is a set of points. So, uh, is that a line? Yeah? You didn't say that. It is the shortest. Okay, that's, that's the point. So, you're saying that this does not constitute a line because these points are not next to each other. Right? 
All right, let me see this. This length has a point here and a point here. Are these two points next to each other? But sir, there are many points lying between those two. Hold on. You said a line is a set of points arranged next to each other. These two points are not next to each other, therefore it is not a line. Change your definition if that you, you don't want that result. So what you're saying is that some points are next to each other, but there can be other points which are not next to each other. But I don't get that result from your definition. This is why I'm finding it very hard to understand what a line is. One minute. I asked you earlier, do you, do you understand what a line is? You All of you said yes. Let me ask you this question again. Do you understand what a line is? Right, good. You see, the beginning of knowledge is the awareness of ignorance. All right? If you think you know, you're not going to learn. So the first step is to realize that we don't know. A line is a set of points with the smallest, having the smallest possible distance between two adjacent points. So if you have one, two is the next one. And three is the next one, four is the next one. So these are consecutive numbers, integers, right? So you, if you say a set of consecutive, so if you say one, two, seven, that wouldn't be a line, right? Because between two and C, uh, between two and seven, a few points are missing, all right? Neighbor, okay? So essentially what you're saying is this. A set of points would constitute a line if every point has a neighbor, right? Except the two ends. So if you have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that would constitute a line because take any point five, this has a neighbor here and a neighbor here. I don't know if you, have, if you know the concept of successor. Have you heard this in Pino's uh, axioms? Have you heard this? Axiom, not Euclid's axioms, but axioms of integers. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The idea of successor, 5 has 6 as a successor, 4 has 5 as a successor, and so on. So those are the neighbors. Fine. So if you have a concept of consecutive, which depends upon the idea of neighbors, then you say every line, except the starting point and the end point, if they exist, must have two neighbors. So this doesn't constitute a problem, right? So here is a point here, and here is another point, here is another point, there are two neighbors. Take any point, then it'll have two neighbors. The fact that these two are not next to each other doesn't matter, right? So if I get all of you together, I can ask you to create a line by making sure that everybody stands touching each other in a line. So any human being will have two neighbors, except those two at the end. Okay, now we understand what a line is, right? In one dimension. In one, yeah, yeah. Line is a one-dimensional object. The point can be one, two, three, four, five. Next to each other from the So we need to include that. Uh -huh. So is that one line? Let's consider. Here's a point. Here's a point. We have defined a line as a set of points such that every point has exactly two neighbors. How many neighbors does it have? Four. Four. So that wouldn't be a line, right? Okay, good. I thought you were going to destroy everything, but you know, that is a good question. But luckily we are saved. Yes. Is that a line? I'm not asking if it's a straight line. It's a line, right? If this is a line, if this is a line, all right, then it's also a line. Maybe. I mean, you might have a reason not to do so. It doesn't matter. We might think of those niceties later. But for now, let's, we can say that this sounds reasonable. Yeah. So, does this mean that line is? 
No, it has to be. Well, we, we can define line as a one dimensional object. That's a standard definition. We can. The curve line is also a one dimensional object. It's not a two dimensional object. A one dimensional object is something that can exist on a flat surface. Right? Oh, well, you can. On a, on, a, on a flat surface, you can also have two dimensional objects. So, uh, that is a two dimensional object. But this is a one dimensional object. Right? What does it mean to say one dimensional anyway? You know? Yeah? Only? Length. Only length. Technically speaking, one dimension means if you're thinking about variables, remember the concept of variables? So you have a variable x and a variable y. Right? So this is one dimension, this is another dimension. So don't think only of geometry. Alright? Okay. So what if it is a curved line? Then this definition. What if what is a curved line? It is a curved line. I mean in that sense itself. Yeah, curved line is still then it will a one dimensional object, right? No, 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 so not about the definition of line. You said it is a set of points which are uh, which have two two neighbors each except for the starting and end point. So in a curved line Point which line. comes back to intersect itself, then the intersection point has four neighbors. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. The question is this. This one is okay. You will have only two neighbors, exactly two neighbors. What about this? Okay, we are back. Sir, two points are overlapping. Sorry? That uh, problem is intersects itself, two points are overlapping. Overlapping. So we need to sort of refine our definition in anyway, right? That's clear. Because here you have four, four of them. Of course, one way of getting out of it to say, okay, that this applies only to non-intersecting lines. But then we have we have to explain why an intersecting line is a line. Problems arise. Okay, let's keep it on the shelf. When we investigate something of this kind, something as fundamental as this, the moment you take three steps, there will be six problems. And you cannot deal with all of them. All right? So we have to say, some problems we'll deal with now, other problems we'll deal with tomorrow, and yet others six years from now. Right? So I'm going to, this is a very important question. I'm going to put it on the shelf. Because we have to finish by 11 o'clock, that's why. All right? Okay. There is something I, but I, I'm, I'm here now to get some understanding from you. I still don't understand. You said a, a, a line is a one-dimensional object, so it, it has length but no width, right? What about a point? What is a point? Can you add many points? If you add many points, do you get a line? If you add many zeros, what do you get? <laughs> yeah? Wait, wait. If you add 16 zeros, what's the result? Then there is something wrong with your definition. Okay? If zero, if a point is something with zero dimension, no matter how many points you add, you will still get zero. Right? We you have to stick to your initial proposition. Don't jump from one to the other. So let me ask you this question. We began with this notion of successor and uh, let's consider the integer line. All right? So you have a zero, you have one, you have two, you have three, four, five, and so on. In this case, success are easy. How many Integers are there between three and four? No. How many integers? None, right? So that means four is a successor of three, immediate successor. Okay, let's move to fractions now. Between three and four, how many numbers are there? Five. Infinite. So given the number line, given any two points, 
any two points, how many points are, are there in between? Infinite. So what does that mean? Can a point have a successor? Can a point have a successor if given any two points that are infinite points in between? Yes or no? You can't. It's because a successor means there is no point in between. And if you agree that given any two points, you have infinite points in between, no two points can have, no two points can be adjacent. There is no notion of consecutive points. But we said that a line is a set of consecutive points. But given the concept of zero, a point as something, an entity with zero dimension, that is not going to work. You see, this is the reason why I said I don't understand what a line is. Do you understand what a line is? Go ask somebody else. <laughs> if you are sufficiently confused, that's the beginning of wisdom. Right? Look, these are not easy questions to solve. And they, they, you're not going to solve, them, solve such questions in the space of half an hour or so. But it, I'm happy if you have understood that a simple question such as a line, what is a line? is an extraordinarily difficult question. Students think they know this because they see some sentence in a textbook. They don't understand the meaning of the sentence. They get the sentence and they think they understand it. But a sentence is not what we are trying to understand. We are not trying to you know, think in terms of words. We are thinking in terms of concepts. We are engaged in serious, rigorous, conceptual inquiry. Right? So, we, we have come to the conclusion, which is good, that we don't understand what a line is. Do we understand what a straight line is? That's right. Okay, you think you understand it? Line segment. Yeah, but I know that Euclid uses the word line to mean infinite line. That's very confusing. I've always found it irritating. So, I'm going to say, this is a line. I'm not going to use the word line segment. This is a finite line. A finite line means, so that's much easier. You understand it better. Otherwise, it's very confusing to say a line has no beginning or end. It's like God. OK, all right. Suppose we have two points, point A and point B. And you can say that AB is a straight line if the path from A to B is the shortest possible path. Shortest path. So if you have some other path, like this, this path is shorter than this. So this is not a straight line. This is a straight line. In mathematics, you cannot take a foot rule and measure, right? That's not how math works. That's how science works. So for a scientist, this is not a problem. Right? For Newton, distance is not a problem because distance is measured in terms of a foot rule or a meter rod. But meter rods and foot rules don't exist in math. Those are physical objects, not mathematical objects. So what is distance? What do we mean by that word? So that is something on a blackboard that's a physical entity. This has width. This thing that I have drawn on the blackboard is a physical object. It's not a mathematical object. When do you say two lines have the same length? When do you say one line is longer than another? Under what circumstances? What's, your, what's the concept of distance you are agreeing to? Number of points, OK. How many points do you have between these two? <laughs> Infinite, right? <laughs> you know this guy called? Right? He had a lot of things to say about infinity. And what was the result? He became insane. <laughs> All right? There is a novel that I want you guys to read. Do you read novels? Yes. Good. 
<laughs> the type of anomaly is a certain ambiguity. This guy, he is a mathematician. He did his master's in, I don't know if he did his PhD. Master's at Sanford, this guy is there. His yeah, grandfather apparently was a mathematician. So this book begins with his grandfather. Okay. Let's get back to the thing. What I'm trying to illustrate, what I'm just trying to illustrate, is a certain mode of conceptual inquiry in mathematics. You can ask similar questions about a whole bunch of other things, uh, most of which mathematicians don't have any answer to. What is a number? You think it is easy, right? You ask a good mathematician, they'll say, oh, don't ask me that question, I don't know. So I've asked this question, all right? What is energy is extremely difficult to answer. If you ask a good theoretical physicist, they would say, I don't know, don't ask me, go ask somebody else. <laughs> What's the number? Mathematician would say, oh, I don't know. I have asked many people, what's a straight line? And they would say, no, no, ask me something else. <laughs> All right? So it is not fair to ask you that question because you know, mathematicians themselves don't know, but it's important to ask that question and see where it can take you. Yeah. Yes, um, can a line be defined as uh, the width of a one-dimensional set of infinite points? You will still have difficulty. The whole difficulty lies with Euclid's notion of point as a zero object. I mean, zero-dimensional object. That is where all the absurdities come from. So you have to do something else, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. All right. <laughs>